Hello, and welcome to Radio Vision. I'm your host, Bernard White. There are certain commonalities that I think exist in all of the crises throughout Africa. And I want to give you what I think the, the three commonalities are. The first is the foreign element. There's a foreign element in all of them. Whether you're talking about what's happening in Libya or what's happening in Cote d'Ivoire, there's a foreign element. The, 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 people, um, they, the people are lying when they identify the uh, the French and the Americans uh, as uh, being on the side of truth. These are invaders, and they are the foreign element. And so we've got to look at this, every one uh, of these situations. And I'll come back to this many times tonight, but I want you to know that. The second one is that these interventionists, discover always within the societies that they're attacking local instruments. You know, individuals who can be used or who are willing to be used against their own country. You can find everyone you can find. This was the case with uh, uh, Congo, with Lumumba. It's a historical situation. I mean, they found Shombe. And he, of course, took Katanga and said, I'm going to take Katanga out of Congo. You see what I'm saying? So they were able to find him and then to create tension inside the country as they were trying to undercut Lumumba. This is always the case. You can find that. This is a historical fact. It's not something that we're making up. This is the way it has been. And number three, there's something else that they do. They, 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 the aim of all of these situations that are going on right now is to control the wealth and the resources of Africa. That's what it's about. That's the fundamental thing. So when you look at uh, Libya, what do you see in Libya? But you see uh, the CIA operatives. They've even told you they got CIA operating in <laughs> Libya. They're very, you know, I'm telling you, with, with they've dumbed down the society now, they can tell you things like that. Oh, yeah, we got, we got 10 CIA operatives operating out of Benghazi. You know, yeah, we, we, we do it. But they also know and knew that in the eastern part of Libya, there was the Al-Qaeda factor, and the Al-Qaeda factor always had a, its eye on the removal of Gaddafi. So they tried to play a game. They tried to wake up Al-Qaeda against Gaddafi. And now they're, they're trying to back, back away and say, well, we, we, we don't know who those people in the East are. Because they, the, the, big, the big obstacle to them was Gaddafi. It was not Al-Qaeda. We'll come to that in a minute. I'm just setting this up for you so you can understand this. In Cote d'Ivoire, the situation was similar. I heard yesterday that Ouattara's army is encircling the presidential palace. Ouattara just ran for president. Where you get army from? How are you going to be running for? You know, that's just like going Bush. And they say, I'm going, you know, Gore's army, where did he get an army from? Well, how, how did Watar get an army? What they got was a collection of rebel forces from the north who have now sided with Watar. And I suspect, he said 2,700 young patriots is what he, the way he wrote it were mowed down. And he said, and he said to me, he said, because he said, this may be my last email, but he said, I'll tell you what, the Russians got the photographs. The Russians fo took the photographs of the corpse. The French, they're trying to rush back now and say, we want Watara's forces to go in there and really to get Bagbo out of his bunker. 
but they are trying to back away from it. But it's Sarkozy, who is, of course, a criminal and the one who ought to be brought before the International Court of Justice. But there's some other people involved in that, too. We'll get to them. Let me tell you something. Because I need, y'all know some of this, and I like talking to y'all because y'all know this stuff. You know what I mean? It's good to talk to an audience that reads and, and knows critically what they under mean. But let me tell you something, just real quick, so that you can have the facts in your mind. The, let's take Court d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast. In the Ivory Coast, there was an election, and it was apparently a very close election. The, 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 uh, let me, let me, I'll just ask you this. You can, this is a rhetorical question because you know what the answer is. The highest judiciary uh, institution in the United States of America is the Supreme Court. Right? That's right. Okay. Well, in many countries, that's the way it is. In Ivory Coast, the Court d'Ivoire, it's the same. The highest judicial body you have is the Supreme Court. When the election was held, Many people said, wait a minute, there's some things going on in some sections of the country that are not right. They're not only up and up. It looks like there's some fraud. But the election was held and they went on. And then the Electoral Commission made a statement. The Electoral Commission said, hey, look here, the winner is Watara. That's what the Electoral Commission said. That's what Tara won. But the Electoral Commission is not the highest body in Court d'Ivoire. The highest body in Court d'Ivoire, the one that has to certify the election, mm -hmm. is not the Electoral Commission. It's the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Council. The Constitutional Council took what the Electoral Commission did, and they should never have made a statement to the public without going to the Constitutional Council. That was what it was supposed to be. But no, they, they jumped out front. Watara won. The Supreme Court of Court d'Ivoire looked at the situation. They said, how could he have won with all this fraud? You can't have 100,000 votes in a place where they only have 10,000 people. It's not possible. How can this be? They said, no. I mean, looking at all this document, we looked at it. The, they said the person who won the election is Laurent Gbagbo. That's what the Supreme Court said. Now, let me tell you something, because you've got to be very clear, understand this. In the United States of America, when you had the Gore-Bush situation about Florida, the Supreme Court came out in support of Bush. Because it's the highest court in the land. In, in Court d'Ivoire, in Ivory Coast, the United States and France decided that no, we are not going to listen to the Supreme Court. That's what they decided. That they didn't give a damn about the Supreme Court of Ivory Coast. Because the Supreme Court came out in support of Laurent Gbagbo. Now, why then did they want Gbagbo out? Why then did they want Gaddafi out? So I'm going to tell you. You got to look deeper. If you don't look deeper, you, you, we, we will miss the whole point of this situation. Who knows how many people have been killed in the Ivory Coast? Nobody knows that number. But let me tell you something. Inside the Ivory Coast, already you had United Nations troops. You had French troops. 2,500 French troops. What are they doing? They need to be in France. 2,500 French troops in, in Ivory Coast. And you had... During this situation, you also had a situation where the army that supposedly, the rebels supposedly, in support of Watara, killed just three, four days ago, 
killed 1,200 people in the city of Dway Quay. 1,200 people killed, killed 1,200. This is, can you imagine the massacre? Well, what, what is this? What is, what is this, this brutality? Why? And the French, uh, uh, who supposedly, along with the United Nations, supposed to be there to, for peace, they then began to attack the people, attack the army of Côte d'Ivoire. You know, there is something else. You may have heard of this, that the South Africans, and then we'll come back to we'll talk about the South Africans too, because we got some strange things going on with the African nations and the AU. We're going to talk about the AU too, but let me just tell you what South Africa did do, which is good. In Côte d'Ivoire, they decided to send 250 troops to Ivory Coast, supposedly to protect the South African citizens. You know how many citizens South Africa got in, in Ivory Coast? 26. They sent 250 troops to support uh, those, those, uh, those, those citizens. But what, what I hope is that what they're trying to do, and, I, and I'm saying this because Zuma did make some statement, he came out in support of Bagbo initially, uh, it, that they're trying to protect Bagbo from the French. Because the French really want him dead. Sarkozy wants him dead, you see, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But the, but, the, but the big issue here is that we do have South Africa making a right judgment on this case. They made a wrong judgment on Libya. Not only did South Africa make a wrong judgment on Libya, but, uh, but bad, good luck, Jonathan and Nigeria made a bad judgment on Libya. And so did Gabon make a bad judgment on Libya because they went along with the United States and France in their resolution against Libya. That, that, was, that, was un, that, was, that was something that was not correct. But in the case of Court d'Ivoire, I come to you to say that I stand in solidarity with the people of that country, with Ivory Coast. I stand in solidarity with the elected uh, official uh, of the president, uh, Bagbo, I believe he's elected uh, president. I stand in solidarity with uh, uh, the, uh, the patriots of that country who are fighting for one thing. And they may lose, but they have put up the fight, and it's a good fight. They don't want colonialism. They don't want the French to control their economy, and they see it coming. And Bagbo has been a defender, uh, uh, certainly, uh, of the uh, independence of uh, Ivory Coast, and he's also wanted to pull his country out of the club that France set up to support the French economy. This is the CFA club. You know, the CFA, that's the currency that they use. The French set up a system where France, well, many of those countries that were French-speaking countries in Africa, their money comes from France. Their money is printed in France. France controls all their money. And I would go say, Bagbo said, wait a minute. No, we, wanna, we want our own currency. France said, you can't have your own currency. Because the currency of these countries that were formerly French controlled during the colonial period, their currency is the backbone to the French economy. This is what France did with Haiti for so long, you remember? This is why Haiti was so important to France. But when they lost Haiti, and then they went into this colonial situation with Africa, then they did something that the British didn't do, that the Portuguese were not able to do. They tied those French-speaking countries in a way to the currency of France, and then devalued the African currency. Oh no, it's a, it's a bitter game. And so Bagbo, taking his, his clue, his cue from people like Mugabe and Chavez, who say, well, you know, I want an independent country. I don't want to be controlled by French, French economy. I don't want to be in, in control by the French franc. I want, I want Ivory Coast to be independent. And they say, wait a minute, buddy. You, you can't be independent. We want somebody who's married to a French woman. 
like Watara, who is urbane, who has uh, a great sense of uh, internationalism, and who understands international economics, we want him to be the president of Ivory Coast. That's what they said. Bagbo, no. That is, I'm telling you, this, this is an insidious attempt to undermine Africa. Brothers and sisters, you cannot underestimate also something else. And I'm going to say this for you, to you. You cannot underestimate the stupidity. That's a hard word. Of the Obama attack on Libya. It is a stupendous mistake of historic proportions. Because Arab racists, who've always had a problem with Africans, have now come out, of, out to kill, to imprison, and to harass Africans in Libya and in other places in North Africa. And let me tell you something else. That this attack on Libya by the first African president yeah. of the United States of America. This attack on African soil yeah. which saw a hundred maybe more than a hundred missiles fired into a city like Tripoli. I mean, can you imagine 110 missiles fired into New York, the anxiety and havoc that would cause? Because they could hit anywhere and strike anywhere. 110 missiles fired by the United States costed over $100 million for one night of attack on Tripoli. This was done by an African president on, an Af on the African continent. I, I, I cannot think of, I mean, this is more than Reagan did. Obama killed more people in Libya than Reagan killed. You can't, uh, you, you, you have to understand something. If you, if you shoot a hundred missiles on a city as tightly packed as Tripoli, I've been to Tripoli. I've flown over Tripoli. It's a tightly packed city. If you, if you fire that many missiles, you kill a lot of people. Obama killed a lot of Africans in Tripoli. Let me tell you something else. You remember the first report? The first report from the Western media? That oh, that Gaddafi had taken African mercenaries. From day one, that's what they said. African mercenaries to fight against his own people. That was a racist piece of information. It could only come from an American who thinks in racist terms. They saw the light complexion Arabs and they saw the black Libyans, and they say they can't be from the same country. You know what I'm saying? You just say, oh, wait a minute. They can't, these, these black people who got these guns, they can't be, they can't be Libyans. They got to be hired hands from somewhere else. That's what the thinking that they had. When most people who know Africa know that all the people in southern Libya are black. And that the chief of staff to Gaddafi is a black man. Now, of course, we can always argue about their consciousness of whether or not they think they're black and all that kind of question. Whether or not, you know, how they identify. But I'm just saying that I've seen the man and I know the man. So, but I'm just telling you, but, you know, if you dig a little deeper, maybe he'll tell you that he's Muslim. I mean, he's Arab, but... I'm just saying to you that he's a black man. He's a, he's a dark-skinned Libyan. And when these reporters saw dark-skinned Libyans, they didn't know what to make of it. 
So that's why they said, you know, he, he's bringing in uh, Africans to fight against the people of Libya. That was a lie. The fundamental stimulus, and I said this in my report, my article in the Amsterdam News, the fundamental stimulus for the attack on Libya is greed. It is not the protection of the Libyan people. It is not the Libyan civilians that, that were somehow being protected. Uh, no. The, the, what, what we know is that the Americans and the French have said, well, you know what? Gaddafi has lost his legitimacy with the people. Well, what does that mean anyway, when you've lost your legitimacy with the people? Does that mean that you only have, like Bush, 29% of the people who support you? Right. What does it mean you've lost your legitimacy with the people? How, how, how do you, what, how, how, what's the percentage? At, at what point do you say a president has lost his legitimacy or her legitimacy with the people? How, how do you make that? And there was, there was no indication of this. And let me just tell you a little bit about Libya, because I'm just because you need to know this, and then I'll tell you something else too. But how? Because people don't understand Libya. First of all, that's the that's the other thing. The Western reporters didn't understand Libya. That's why they didn't know uh, whether or not to call Gaddafi a president or not. He's not a president. But they didn't know that. They don't know what to call him because they have never seen a system like that. The only system they know is the one that the West creates. They don't respect other systems. That's why they make fun about his African clothes, because they don't respect Africa. And they don't respect anything Africans. And then, of course, you've got some Africans who don't respect it either. And that's why they make the comments they make. But in the case of Libya, the country is ruled by popular committees. Popular committees, all right? Now, what, what does that mean? The popular committees ruled the country. And there are about 468 representatives of those popular committees who are, who are like ministers, and they basically make a lot of decisions. But, every, but what the aim of this was, to have these popular committees, was to have what would be called direct democracy. This is better than American democracy. You know, y'all think that electoral democracy in America is the best form of government. But, but what Qaddafi said, no. He said, I'm going to have all, the, the people. They're going to, they gonna, if we're going to give anything out, we're going to let the people have something. You Give it to the people. Now, let me read you something. This is what he said. It, this, this, because, and I'm going to tell you this, I told you greed. Now remember greed, what's the greed for? What, what does France want? What does America want? Oil. Because it's the main thing. Oh, you know that, all right? So they want the oil. Okay, so, so what he decided to do, this is why they want him out. He decided to nationalize, bad word, <laughs> nationalize all of the oil companies. Exxon, Shell, BP. He said, I'm going to nationalize all these oil companies. That's what he said. That's last year. I'm going to nationalize all these oil companies. I'm going to nationalize all these oil companies for this reason. Because even though we are trying very hard administratively to take the money that we're getting and to distribute it to the masses of people, we are not being successful. Here's what he said. Do, and he said to his ministers, don't be afraid to directly redistribute the oil money and create fairer governance structures that respond to people's interests. He said this to a popular committee. Then the, the, what, what happened was when he made this statement and the popular committees, these are the back, this is the backbone of Libya where the citizens are represented at the, has failed and the state's economy has failed. Enough is enough. The solution is for the Libyan people to directly receive all revenues and decide what to do with them. To this and, he, and, and so he, he, he urged radical reform of his own government. He said, because we are not getting enough of the money from these oil companies directly to the people. 
And oil should be owned by the state, not by a private company. This is what he said. And when the ministers met, the ministers decided that, well, we need to delay this action. Actually, only 64 ministers decided that he was correct in his analysis. And so, given the rejection of the committee, Gaddafi then said this before a public meeting. He said, my dream during all these years is to give the power and wealth directly to the people. I'm telling you why, and look, you cannot listen to Fox News or CNN and Anderson, what's his name, to ever get any understanding of what this situation is about. And so, his false image of him as a dictator who robs his people. You know what, what they say? He's a dictator who robs his people. It's so far from the truth. In fact, so far, if you, you re, if you understand the picture that they're giving you of Gaddafi, one of the things they give you is they portray him, um, you know, as not only a person who is against his own people, but they also try to show you uh, that uh, he's been attacking his own people. But we, you, you get used, and, and I look very closely on all American television. And I'll tell you what I, I'm told you, I'll tell you what I did in a minute. But I looked on American television, just looked on American television, and you had one had pictures of one-sided battles where ev heavily armed terrorists were fighting with nobody. Right. <laughs> you know, where are the people they fight? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, look, it's like Photoshop. You can do anything with the computer. I'm saying, where are the other people? They should have even manufactured, you know, some Qaddafi army people out there fighting against them. No, you don't, you don't see them. And the thing is that they also had, they got two other reports, false reports. They said, you know, Qaddafi was fleeing the country. He's fleeing the country. And then the latest one, which I think is an incredibly clever piece of misinformation, coming directly probably from the CIA. That Gaddafi's mama is a Jew. Did y'all hear that one? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. yes. oh, that's clever. That's clever. So now you got, now you got the people, the Muslims in Tripoli saying, wait, wait a minute, we can't support no Jew. You know, this is a problem. So they, that's the problem that they tried to create for him, you see? So all of this is, this is what I call disinformation. It's an attempt to somehow undermine the legitimacy of the leader of the Libyan country. And then they also said one other thing, uh, that the uh, condition of the people in Libya is horrible. But let me tell you what the truth is, and I'm going to tell you how I find out all this, number one. The first thing I do, I, like, I love the Internet. I just went to the internet, look up Libya, and I look up the CIA report. <laughs> Libya has the highest standard of living in Africa. Oh, they got the highest standard of living in Africa. They got the highest standard of living in Africa. Not only do they have the highest standard of living in Africa, but everybody got a house. Education is free. Everybody, everybody included, and they send the students to Europe. Free. You can go. If you're smart enough, you can go to Europe, get an education in Libya. Health, free. And even when you look at the pictures in Libya, you look at the cities that they're supposed to be bombing, and you, you see well-developed cities. You're like, what, what are they talking about? I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. We live in the midst of one of, the, of history's greatest purveyors of propaganda. And if we are not careful, we will be crazy. This is an insane situation. And it make, that's why I gave you those viruses. If you don't understand these viruses, then, then we are precisely caught up in it. And that's why it is important 
that we have to understand where we are and what we have done uh, and what we need to do. Let me just tell you something else. We must uh, be uh, clear that, uh, uh, that the African Union, now I'm, I'm a member of WADU, but I want us to be clear, and I, I've had many discussions with Brother Chin Weizu about this. We have to be clear that the African Union doesn't belong to us. One third of its support comes from the European Union. That's its financial support, right? So when Europe, America, and France say to the African Union, we want your support on this or that, they have to first check and see whether or not they are going to lose certain resources if they do that or say that. You see what I'm saying? That's the condition we have. What was Gaddafi's aim? Gaddafi's aim was to get the African Union to be independent. To be completely independent. But you can't do that if people don't pay the dues. If you're not willing to pay for your own organization. And you're going to depend on everybody else to pay for your organization. The people that you depend on to pay for your organization. They're going to call a lot of the shots. And in the case of the African Union. Gaddafi, Libya with 5 million people. Libya paid one of the largest amounts to the African Union to keep it running. Now, if Gaddafi goes and we get some uh, racist Arab person in office in Libya, then what you have is a situation where the African Union will probably have to rely even more on Europe. Europe wanted Gaddafi out because Gaddafi was a great obstacle to the advancement of Europe and Africa. This is, this, is a, this is serious politics. This is not a little play stuff. This is a serious situation. France will have succeeded in its major plan to bring not just the African Union, but the states in the north of Africa into what it wanted to have as uh, Sarkozy's Napoleonic dream, some union of the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Basin states. That's his plan. And that plan was blocked by Gaddafi. He, when it was first brought up to him and said, okay, we want this Mediterranean basin so the countries in Southern Europe and North Africa, they be one trading partners. He said, no, we can't do that because I believe in the United States of Africa. I see the integrity of the African continent. And they said, no. If you believe in the integrity of the African continent and you don't want to be a part of the European basin, something's wrong with you. But they wanted him to be a part of the European basin because of his oil. And that was a big part of the situation. If we understand that, then we also understand that the leader in opposing the Mediterranean group in, in such a scenario as France had been trying to develop, he had created for himself a situation in which the West would be out to get him. They've got to remove him. They've got to remove him because he has all of this oil wealth. And he had said it in July 10, July, rather July 2010. And I cited this in a paper that I've written for a journal that's coming out. Because I gave a speech on Nkrumah and Gaddafi uh, at the, in the British Columbia uh, last summer. And I cited this uh, speech that I get, again read from read, oh, what I told you what I, what I do. I read a lot of different newspapers from different countries. You know, I just put the country name in there and I say news. So if I, I, I put, I put, I Google Russia and put Russia news and up, then up pops the uh, Russian news in English. I put uh, Niger news, Nigeria news. I put, I try to get it from a whole lot of different angles, Venezuela, 
everywhere. So you get a, you get a v real idea. But I read this wonderful statement that Gaddafi made in July of 2010. He was uh, in, uh, in, in Jamina. He said that the, he was on his way to the, uh, the African Union Summit in Uganda. Museveni's country. That's another story. But he was on his way to Uganda, and the, U the African Union was already meeting before he went there, and they were talking about uh, taking care of children in Africa. And you know what he said? He talked to the people from Niger and Chad and uh, maybe Burkina Faso, those nations of the Sahel, and he said to them, I'm on my way to Uganda, and you should, you, you should go to this president. You should go to. And when we get uh, to Kampala, we have to stand together and say to them that it is not the uh, purpose nor the objective of the African Union to be talking about children in Africa. That should be left to UNICEF. The issue for the African Union is the United States of Africa. That's all. And he's right. That's exactly why it was formed. If you look back at 2002, when they formed it in CERT, the aim was to create an organization with one purpose, the United States of Africa. We will move toward the United States of Africa. Now, there's some interesting that's happened about that recently. I'll tell you in a minute. But he said, that's what we want to move toward the United States of Africa. And the reason that OAU had to go out of existence is because the OAU could not bring it into existence. It had two purposes when it was formed in the 1960s. And one of them was that it should rid the continent of colonialism. And it did that successfully. The other one was that it should move toward the United States of Africa. And it didn't do that because it never set up any committees to do it. It never had any, any there was no uh, bureaus to work in that regard. They were all working in regards of clearing the uh, Europeans out of Africa. So, so he said, then let's abandon that and create one organization whose Aim is to bring into existence the United States of Africa, and that's what they did. And that's why they created this thing called the, uh, the, uh, the authority, the African authority. And because the African authority was to be the step before we have uh, the, the unity, the union of African states. But the point of the matter is, when you start looking at this, is that it was Gaddafi's idea in 2010 that that African Union was extremely powerful. France looked at that with great trepidation. The United States looked at it with great trepidation. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. What, what, do, what do they have in the United, the United States? This country has in Africa? AFRICOM. That's the African command. Can you imagine if an African country like Nigeria had a, a North American command? In North America, that was that was overlooking uh, action in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Would you think they would allow uh, Nigeria to put on put put up bases in Mexico so that they can watch the United States? What kind of stuff is that? Well, why would the United States have an Africom? What is the purpose of this? And did you know there were only five African countries? that decided that they did not want AFRICOM in their countries? Do you know what two of those countries were? Ivory Coast and Libya. Oh, wow. They said, we don't want no AFRICOM. You are not going to put no, you know, we, we're not going to, you're not going to put your bases here. You are not going to, we, we, are, we, are, we are not going to allow America to put his forces on African soil or to spy on African nations. No, they don't want the United States of Africa. And this is what we have to understand. You know, the Western world, if they were really, thank you, if the Western world was really concerned at all about civilians, I always tell people, why hasn't the Western world rolled into Israel on the West Bank 
and save the Palestinian people who suffer true slaughter and discrimination at the hands of Israel. What is Gaza if it is not the pit of hell? I mean, why, why not save the Palestinians? Then this, to me, would be a, a humanitarian act on the part of the West. When shall we hear high-sounding word, sounding words from the leaders of the Western world in support of those Arabs in, in West Bank? Look, we must be aware of the gifts of Europe. I said in 2007 that Obama would be forced by the empire to support the aims of the empire. I, I wrote that in an article before he was elected. People had this art, a journal, special issue. What's going to happen if you get a black president? I said, you get a black president, a black president, if he is following the aims of the empire, he's going to support and protect the empire. Right. And, in, and in, in precisely, Obama, with I consider bad advice, Susan Rice, yeah. Hillary, Hillary Clinton, bad advice on Africa. Two worst people in the world when it comes to thinking about Africa. And let me just tell you, I'm telling you this. I mean, I, I was, I gave, I know we love Barack Obama, but I'm just telling you, I gave him the benefit of the doubt initially when he snubbed the representative of Robert Mugabe who came to his office to visit him and he wouldn't meet with him. I said, well, you know, maybe he makes a mistake because he just got in office. But now when I see Libya and when I see Cote d'Ivoire, when I see him backing Sarkozy, one of the worst races in contemporary Europe, then we have, we have a big problem. We have a very big problem. We have people in the, we have a man in the White House who doesn't understand exactly what's going on in the world and particularly what's going on in the African world. What is Obama's objective in Libya except regime change? And they say, well, no, we're not, we're not after regime change and yet you're bombing the man's house. We don't want to kill him, yet you're bombing his, his house. Wait, wait, why you don't want to kill him? Yeah, what's going on here? They have to make Gaddafi evil. They got to make him a monster. They got to make him, they have to say he's insane. Now this is a very intelligent man. But they got to make him, you know, they start off like that. This is like Chavez. Oh, Chavez must be crazy. You know, everybody who's crazy except white Americans. But everybody else, they're crazy. Something wrong with him, what he's thinking. How can he think like that? The man run a country for 42 years, and he, but he must be insane. No, no, he's not insane. And he understands precisely what the geopolitical strategies are for Europe and how Europe intends to dominate the rest of the world. Look, I, I'm going to be, I'm closing down. But they have to make him evil. This is how you destroy your opponents. You taint them in the minds of the people, in the masses. Do they have jobs, schools, health, houses, water in Libya? Didn't, didn't Gaddafi do all that? I mean, didn't he make the desert bloom in Libya? Shoot. Who helped to create the instability in Libya? France, Britain, and the United States. And I don't need to tell you who France is or who Britain is or who the United States is. You can know that they have never been in support of fairness. And they have never worked in the interest of justice. I mean, those three countries have been some of the worst uh, violators of human rights in the history of the world. And I don't, I don't put much trust in them. Uh, since Kwame Nkrumah, Africa has rarely had a visionary as broad in thinking and as dedicated in commitment uh, as Gaddafi. Perhaps in his desire to strengthen the continent to make Africa powerful, he may have gone too far uh, with his donations to the governments of Senegal. Mm -hmm. who, who funded those conferences of the black intellectuals in Senegal? Who gave those cultural festivals $5 million on one occasion, $2 million on another? 
Who paid the African intellectuals who went to those conferences in Africa? Gaddafi. Who paid the civil servants in Burkina Faso last year? When the government of Burkina Faso couldn't pay its own civil servants, who paid them? Libya. Gaddafi. Who, I mean, look, I'm, I'm just saying to you that the West understands this. They feel that Gaddafi has too much power in Africa. And what they are trying to do is to minimize his influence because they don't want the United States of Africa. And so they have their own instruments in Africa. As I told you at the beginning, they have their own instruments. And their instruments, I mean, if you take what Zuma did, when Zuma voted in support of the resolution and then wanted to back away from it, you know, when he said the resolution of the United States by any means necessary, they want to try to bring down Libya and so forth. He, they voted for that. And, and, and Gabon voted for that. Gabon, of course, is a great com competitor for, 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 for corruption. I mean, no other, I mean, can't you, can't you, you know what happened? Bongo, Bongo died. And who, who did French support in Gabon after, he, after Bongo died? Bongo's son. They all in the, it, the, the France controls Gabon. And Gabon is also one of the wealthiest countries in Africa. But, but the money is not to the masses. I have a good friend who's from Gabon. And he says the, peoples, the people are suffering in Gabon. But the presidential family lives well. They're billionaires, you see. France likes that. They can control them, manipulate them. But not people with principle. You've got to have principle and have a sense of dignity and a sense of belief about, about your own self and about African people. Let me tell you this. The Arab nation of Qatar and the United Emirates gave their support to attack Libya. But when have they supported Africa? When have those Arabs in Qatar supported Africa? Never. You, you don't have any examples of that. Well, when, when have the United Emirates supported Africa? No, there, there are no examples of that. You see, transformations are always produced by those who are focused on long-term goals, not by those who make convenient alliances with the enemies of of their people. As Nkrumah was fond of saying, we face neither east nor west, we face forward. The work of the brother leader, as Muammar al-Qaddafi is sometimes called, has been to raise African consciousness to the point where some of the nations on the continent of Africa reject the loyalty they hold for the colonial masters. Who has been better at supporting African people? Obama or Qaddafi? I mean, I'm not going to answer that question. No. With the proper safeguards and cooperation of the African world, the Libyan people can sort out their own internal squabbles. The African Union has said so, but it is compromised in Libya as it is in Cote d'Ivoire. The great danger in the attacks on Libya is that the United States is trying out AFRICOM. I've told you about that. Uh, and, uh, and, and France is also trying out whether or not it can have a neo-colonial, I call it a modo colonialism. Modo, M-O-D-O, -O, meaning uh, contemporary, modern colonialism, a, a current colonialism. Uh, vulture history. Uh, let me just, you know, there's so many things. I got to come back another time, because I know, this, I, uh, you know, we're, like, we're going to get out of here in a few minutes. But let me just say this. Vulture history. So I want to just make this note, and this is an aside. I, I, I'm, I want to say this with great dignity. I had, a, I, I have, I, I knew one of our great scholars who passed away, Manning Merrill. I, I knew him. And in fact, uh, he and I were at the University of Illinois together the last time uh, I saw him. But what the press is trying to do, and maybe because 
in his moment of weakness, he wrote what appears to be a vulture history of Malcolm. I, I, I think it's a tragic thing. You know, because uh, this whole notion of uh, trying to smutty the name of Malcolm, this is a, this is a, a ground. Come back another time, because I know, this, I, uh, you know, we're, like, we're going to get out of here in a few minutes. But let me just say this. Vulture histories. I want to just make this note, and this is an aside. I, I, I'm, I want to say this with great dignity. I had, a, I, I have, I, I knew one of our great scholars who passed away, Manning Marable. I, I knew him. And in fact, uh, he and I were at the University of Illinois together the last time uh, I saw him. But what the press is trying to do, and maybe because in his moment of weakness, he wrote what appears to be a vulture history of Malcolm. I, I, I think it's a tragic thing, you know, because uh, this whole notion of uh, trying to smutty the name of Malcolm, this is a, this is a, a grimy business. It's like taking any of your icons and saying, you know what, you think he's an icon, but I'm going to show you he's not an icon. And then what they did, what they did was when Ma Manning died, what CNN did, all they had at the bottom of the screen was a leading black scholar dies a few days before the publishing of his book on Malcolm. But they didn't tell you Manning Marable died. They just said a lead because it was not about Manning. It was about an attack on Malcolm. It was that was it was so cold. And I'm just mentioning that here because I'm saying vulture histories. That's what I call them. They find the, the, the idea is to try to find fault with African leadership. With 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 our people to this notion of deconstructing everything. To, to make them more human. That's what they call it. But, 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 but the oppressor is never deconstructed like that. And maybe you don't have to deconstruct the oppressor. Maybe the oppressor is so truly evil that everybody just knows that's when you just oppress them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I mean, but, but you remember the, 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 the first thing, I, and I just, remember all, you got to remember all this stuff. The first event when they start attacking Gaddafi was to say, this is a salacious detail. He is always accompanied by a buxom Ukrainian woman. Did y'all read that? You know who y'all didn't read that? I'm telling you, I said, now what, 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 this, this is the, this is the idea of destroying in you your own uh, trust. You, you, so that you, you, you be shaken. Say, what's going on here? You see what I'm saying? No, and I, there's so much to tell you. Three hundred million dollars he paid for an African satellite. You know uh, what Europe was charging the continent of Africa, the AU, five hundred million dollars a year to use the satellite because you know, we 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 ain't put no satellite up there yet, right? You know, I mean, on our own with our own rockets. So you, we were using European satellite. We paid him five hundred million a year. You know what Gaddafi said? No, he said that's wrong. He says no. Let me. Let, he said Libya will give 300 million because it only takes 400 million to have your own satellite. Somebody can put it up there for you. He said, I'll give 300 million. If the rest of the African continent comes up with the other, then we put our own satellite up. That's what they did. They, 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 got, they, got, uh, they, got th they did 300 million and then they got 27 uh, a million from the West African Bank and uh, they got uh, uh, 50 million from uh, Nigeria. And they say, we, 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 we put up our own, we put up our own satellite. You see what I'm saying? But that's, that's the way he was thinking. And, and so they, they did that. And if you also understand that when Obama, right after the attack on Libya, Obama froze all the accounts of Libya. You know what he did by doing that? 
he froze, he, in blocking the use of Libyan money for Africa, in order to block Gaddafi, the money was, belonged to the Central Bank of Libya and was meant for African Federation projects. He blocked that money. He, $30 billion. He said, no, no more money for the African Federation. <laughs> this is what Obama said. The African Investment Bank in the city of Sirte, which is the hometown of Gaddafi, that stopped. They stopped that bank. They said, no more money there. And then the creation of the African Monetary Fund, which was located, which is located at Yaoundé, the money, $42 billion dollars, in that bank at Yaoundé, was which which was which which Gaddafi was putting that forty-two billion in Yaoundé in Cameroon. He was putting that money in the African monetary system so that they could create a whole new system to get the African nations out of the CFA, the France control. Uh, Obama stopped that. The, one other bank, the Central African Bank in Nigeria at Abuja was to begin to help end the monetary control of West African nations as well and to end the 50-year rule of France over, West, over these West African countries. And they, they stopped it. So I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we, we, have, a, we have a tough situation here. Um, you know, look at what happened with my friend T.D. Aristide in Haiti. He wanted freedom, true autonomy. He wanted to stand Haiti on its own feet. And this threatened France and the, and the American government. The aim of the attack in Libya, as it is in Cote d'Ivoire, is to create a situation in which Africa continues to be under the heel of the West. Because we don't make bombs, we don't build bombers, we don't build planes, we don't build tanks. We, 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 can't take, we can't take a position often against the Western world without losing generous grants of money. And so we've got to, uh, we've got to, we've got to work on this. And in the end, one last thing. Brothers and sisters, my heart is saddened by what is going on in Cote d'Ivoire. Every day, the, the murders, the killing, Sarkozy is a criminal. And, and I, I think that it is time that we call, uh, we demand that, uh, that Obama steps up to the plate. I would love to see us have an ad in the Amsterdam News, uh, somewhere, a statement uh, from the Pan-African, Afrocentric, internationalist community that says that, that uh, this massacre that has gone on in Cote d'Ivoire uh, on Obama's watch is something that uh, is a crime against humanity. We, we have to do that. Uh, if, if it's true uh, that Africa is suffering, then we cannot be at peace. Uh, we need to stop the war in Libya, stop the war on Cote d'Ivoire, stop the plans and schemes against African people in Venezuela, Haiti, and Zimbabwe. Yes. We must assert the power of the people of Africa. We must join Wadu and join Afrocentricity International and work toward the liberation of all African people. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, brothers and sisters.